Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I wanted to talk about um, the gene key that we are working with at this current time as we sort of approach the full moon in Aries. And some of the kind of insights um, that are coming through as I've been reading up about it now, um, my sort of niche or um, expertise um, is galactic astrology. So I am not an expert in the gene keys and I certainly don't claim to be, but it is an area that I'm sort of being drawn into explore and to look at in more depth. And you know, whenever I do, I'm always really struck by the synergy between what is going on um, with the planets, with the fixed stars, a sort of a alongside, um, you know, the energy of the, each of the Gene Keys that we move through. So the Gene Key 32 is about ancestral reverence. And Gene Key 32 invites us to really explore the shadow of failure and in particular the fear that we have of failure through the gift of um, preservation and the city of veneration. So those are two quite, um, you know, interesting words to be working with and interesting concepts. But I'm going to try um sort of give my own perspective and my own interpretation and also pull in some of the astrological influences and alignments that I feel are really playing out at this time that are helping us to work with this energy of this um, gene key. And the gene keys, there are 64 gene keys and um as the sun moves around the zodiac it spends six days in each gene key or each human design gate so um we moved into i'm filming this on wednesday and we moved into gene key 32 in the very early hours of monday for us in the uk and then we will be moving into the next one which is, if I can look at the right month in my diary, um, Saturday we move into Gene Key 50. So 32 is very much active while we are um, working with this full moon in Aries tomorrow. And so when we're working with um, failure and the sort of the energy, the concept, the idea of failure, um, you know, it... It is one of the most debilitating kind of, um, I know, emotions, ideas, belief systems that we can possibly face. Because, you know, when we are scared of failing at something, it will often mean that we don't even try. You know, fear of failure can just create the biggest barrier, the biggest block. And it really, you know means if we're scared of failing at something we're basically standing in our own way and creating a reason not to try it and this can be you know failure of being enough of knowing enough of doing enough of being the right thing of being um of you know knowing the right thing all of all of that um comes into this sort of um theme of failure but the, the thing is and Again, I'm, you know, my work in this field of um, soul astrology and galactic astrology, you know, time and time again, I am reminded of this truth. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is a shadow. It is almost like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a, a self-preservation type um, energy, isn't it? Because if you kind of can can give yourself the give yourself the excuse that you know maybe you shouldn't try it because what if it all goes wrong you are actually you know in many ways saving your skin um if that makes sense but actually what i have come to know is that everything even when we perceive it to be a failure is actually all part of the process it's part of the journey and there will always be something to learn from even if you know at face value it feels like it was a complete disaster you know whatever it is there will always be a learning opportunity and growth that comes through it so actually 
failure is it's it's a myth it's not something it is a shadow it's not a real thing and actually you know it is getting to the point where you can see that every single action and every single experience has value it has something to teach you it has something that you can take away and work with you know in whatever form that comes from so you know this is about stepping out of the shadow, trying to release this fear of failure because it is often the fear of fa fear of failure that stops us and prevents us from being our true authentic selves and for sort of shining our light, using our voice, sort of expressing ourselves, you know, speaking our truth and um, standing in our truth, you know, all of that is often prevented through this fear and actually almost, you know, a hundred times out of a hundred, it isn't actually a real fear. What does fear stand for? False emotion appearing as real. Is that right? Um, yeah, or false energy appearing real. So, you know, that is, that's first of all, one thing to think of when we are working with the shadow of the 30 second gene key. Now, we start to look at our ancestral lineage and all the people, the souls and um, the beings who have walked this earth and other earths, other, other planets, other star systems before us. All the lineage, all the experience, the DNA, the bloodlines that we carry in us as we work with the gift of preservation. And this is really about acknowledging that we are part of a chain. We are not just, you know, it is not just about us. This is about acknowledging that, you know, where we come from, what we come from, and all the wisdom and all the value and all the experience that we carry with, with us or within us through our connections to other souls, other lifetimes, and also our own heritage our own lineage, our own past life experience. You know, this is sort of very much working with the South Node energy it is what you are bringing in with you that feels familiar and, um, you know, that is kind of your like your toolbox, your tool toolkit, all those gifts that you have worked on before that you are bringing through to support you. You know, that also applies to you know, all, everything that has come before, if that makes sense. So this is real ancestral lineage, ancestral past, all the foundations, the roots, the energy that is basically holding you up. And, you know, there's this sort of image that we stand on our ancestors' shoulders in a way because they are supporting us, you know, and we are relying on what it is that they learnt in order to carry us through this time but we're also pulling on all those gifts all that wisdom and you know all that light all that support all that love all that inspiration that admiration that is coming from them and through them and into us at this time and you know as we step into um veneration um and this is the gift is again acknowledging that we are all connected that you know we cannot um, we can't disregard what comes before us because it plays such a huge part in where we are now and where we are going, you know, and often, yeah, I want to say, you know, we think we've chosen to be here at this critical time, you know, to really support the ascension and to bring, increase the frequency on the planet and to help heal. But what are we doing? We're actually healing so many ancestral wounds and sort of, um, shifting the energy where it might be stuck or where it you know it's caused a lot of trauma and the energy of that the yeah the energy of that trauma is filtering through we are here to shift that to clear that to cleanse it to heal it um, and as we do so, you know, we are releasing all the lines of souls and ancestors that, standing, that are standing behind us. Um, and we're doing that in service to them for ourselves and for everybody else, for all of humanity. So as we are working towards this full moon in Aries, it is really helping us to release any sort of fear, any restrictions, any blocks that are holding us back, that are preventing us from stepping into who we are, to claiming who we are, to standing in 
our true authentic um, self, our identity, claiming our identity, but also acknowledging that, you know, it is not just about us, although we are giving, being given this opportunity to strip away all the outer influences, all the programming, all the conditioning, all the false belief patterns, all the false fears. And this is just perfect, you know, because we, the sun is shining a light so we can actually see where it is false and where we can let go. And it is also about honouring our ancestors and all of those who have come before and who are holding the space in apes and allowing us to be here now and to do that work, you know, just honouring the fact that we are all connected and standing in awe and admiration of that fact, sort of acknowledging that, you know, we are not walking alone, that our ancestors and our soul family and all our star beings and, you know, everybody out there is also walking with us. So, um, you know, it is, yeah, we are all connected. We are all part of this and we all have our own little unique role to play, but we can't do it on our own. Two things that are coming through really strongly that are connected to this, connected to the ancestors in terms of the astrology. The first is the fact that Mars is currently in Cancer and is building up to an opposition with Pluto. Now, Cancer is the sign that rules our past, our foundations, our heritage, our lineage, our childhood, um, you know, where we have come from. And when Mars is moving through Cancer, this is really activating that energy, really forcing us to look at it, to explore it, to feel passionate about it um, and to truly understand it. And of course, you know, with this full moon in Aries shining a really bright light on the self and the identity and who we are, you know, when we let go of everything that isn't us. Um, you know, again, the square to Mars is really sort of pulling that in, the ancestry, the lineage, you know, we cannot kind of step forward into who we are without acknowledging where we've come from I guess is the message and you know and how where we have come from is playing such a big part of who we are stepping into and who we are and um, we also with with Pluto in opposition this is really uncovering secrets uncovering hidden wisdom uncovering hidden knowledge and understanding about who we are and who we come, who where we come from and what our lineage is in terms of you know just a soul level but also sort of speaking more galactically as well and the other thing that really struck me I'll just to say that opposition is building now but it won't be exact until the 1st of November so this is kind of you know a period of time especially as the sun moves into Scorpio when this is building so we have this full moon in Aries then we'll have the new moon in Scorpio we'll have this Mars and Pluto opposition at the time of the new moon at the beginning of November in Scorpio you know so it's like uncovering secrets of who we are and and our ancestors and you know all that amazing wisdom and you know yeah so two points Algol in the Perseus constellation is in an exact conjunction to Uranus at the moment. And because Uranus is retrograde, we're going to have another exact conjunction as Uranus moves back past 24 degrees of Taurus. But for the now, you know, this is really shining a light and breaking through all these wounds that are connected to um, sort of witch, the witch wound and not having the courage to be seen, to speak your truth, to shine your light, to share your gifts, to even acknowledge that you have gifts for fear of persecution, for fear of a sort of isolation and rejection and ostracism, you know, all of that, you know, this is really being activated at this time. So for anybody who feels, you know, scared to shine their light and to show up and to sort of say, actually, this is who I am, this is what I can do, and this is where I've come from. This is a time when we are being encouraged to release that, to step out of that state of fear to step out of that shadow because as we speak our truth as we share our gifts as we show up and shine our light we are releasing and we are freeing our ancestors who weren't able to do that because they lived in a different time they lived in a different energy and you know it just wasn't the same for them you know they were in so many cases 
you know, persecuted and murdered for shining their light and for speaking their truth. And, you know, so many of us carry those wounds, those fears, those cellular memories. You know, this is real. This is valid. You know, I I experience it very strongly myself and I know so many others who do. But this full moon in Aries and this conjunction with Algor is really inviting us just to step out of that and to release those fears, to have the courage to show up, to stand in your authentic truth and to be seen, to use your voice, to shine your light and to remember who you are. But also acknowledging where you came from because that is such a big part of who you are and you know when we when we do that it frees everybody in our lineage all the people that stand behind us will be freed and that is what you know that is where the healing that is where the liberation and the ancestral um healing comes from and that's when it happens so, um, yeah, I just thought that it, it kind of felt like it wanted to be shared. And I know I'm not alone in sort of experiencing, you know, fear of showing up and shining my light, despite what it looks like, despite the fact, you know, I come on and I talk about this on YouTube on a very public platform. There's a big part of me in my own um, sort of personal life that hides away and still doesn't have the courage to shine. Um, and I'm really hoping that this full moon in Aries is going to kind of give me a bit more courage to do that because, you know, as you hide yourself away, you keep part of yourself in the shadow and that, um, you know, that part really wants to be seen, it wants to be heard, it wants to be acknowledged, it wants to be accepted, it wants to be embraced, it wants to be loved. And that is a big part of, you know, what we are here to do. So, um, yeah. I hope that has resonated and it's made sense. And, you know, I just, yeah, I just felt it was worth sharing. So thanks for watching and I will see you soon.